Welcome to the WGL EU Season 4 Match Week 9. We are into Play Day 2 of the two, obviously the final one now coming up. And last week, well, last Play Day, I did tell you guys this one was going to be incredible. And it's not just the impact it's going to have on the overall rankings, which we'll go into later, but it's the fact that some of these teams do have a bit of a grudge and it's certainly going to be a high caliber play day. It's going to be great. Um, for me, that last match stays where it's really going to be at Denial versus Virtus Pro. Oh, yeah. We got a couple of warm up matches on the way, but for me, that one's really the big one. Yeah. And for you guys to maybe at home understand the gravity of why it's going to be such a big game. I think we need to take a look back at some of the previous play days so you guys can understand what we've seen coming up to this. So guys, let's have a little look at that video to recap what we've just been getting up to. Good evening, ladies and gents, and welcome to the WGL EU Season 4 Match Week 10. And Eurofish has been spotted. He's been caught out. 7-0-8 damage already coming in. Psycho Mike making the push out of this one. There goes Eurofish. Now Durs next up looking a little bit too tasty for Freefall to turn down. Moving in so far, only just losing Psycho Mike as the rest of TCM finally get into the battle. But it's not looking good. And Thoris has been caught heavily down. Massive amounts. And a final killing blow from Agenti will bring a massive amount of favor into the hands of Freefall. And Wilkie now trying to get into the action. Picked up by Thoris. That's two. Big play from Thoris. Finally taken out of the scene by Morning Wolf. But is the damage going to continue towards TCM? Or will it be free fall? Still Mojo finds a Genty. Still Mojo still firing towards Everson. This is looking like TCM could draw this one up. I'm not sure if he's going to be in time. KKT Gambo is also having to reset the game. He gets taken down Five by Novax without a re reset. Five seconds left, three seconds, two seconds. Keep your eye on that clock. One shot could do this. He doesn't land it. The base is capped by C play. The all in strategy, the well read play, all pays off. Let's see if they can finish this one off. The dead zone now coming around the backside. Mirage did not expect this. Rust to find Stanley. Hacky by Mirage. And this is a whitewash coming out here. C play have barely lost a player. Nervex now joins in. Aki finds Birgit though. And Voodoo's pretty much the last man standing of any form of importance. Taking shell after shell. There is no cover here. And C play have just folded around them. Completely consumed them. Leaving just Voodoo's alive. And this will be a 3-0. Voodoo's can do nothing but die with six tanks moving in to do the work. that kills or claims it. And it's going to be a 3-0 pick up there for C play. And I've got to say, it's great to watch Cplay doing that again. Yeah. Those guys have been working so hard this season. They have really put in some phenomenal performances. And I think both of us were discussing it just as we got here today, how impressed we were of, of how well they've been really playing and the high caliber of gameplay they've really brought to this league. Yeah, they've got a few uh, wins under their belt now. Mm. They've really started getting momentum because we did say at the beginning of the season that they were very impressive. We saw them yep. against Virtus Pro and School Bus and we were like, these guys have got real potential. Yep. And then they had like a mid-season slump where they played Evil Panel Squad where they got a little bit shocked thinking, that they could beat them fairly easily. Yeah. But now at the end of the season, you know, like middle to end season, they've really started getting themselves going and having multiple wins under their belt in a row. Very impressive stuff from a new team. Yeah, and I think we need to check out the rankings so you guys can really see the effect of what they've been doing recently. They've actually got themselves quite far up into that. In seventh at the moment, I they think they were last at one point. Yeah, exactly. You can see the turnaround effect that the last couple of games have had towards and they have really started to pick up. They have more wins than the team in front, but obviously more losses. And, you know, it, if you look at the draws are coming yeah, to effect, yeah. it makes sense. TCM still in sixth, but C play is certainly getting up there. And this spells worrying times for the likes of Denial and anyone down below that because they're just starting to be almost out of the runnings here. I think those top six are actually the best teams we have in the season. Um, Dream Leprechaun's very impressive considering they're such a new team. TCM, I, I really think they should be higher up. They got three draws there and it just shows how unable they are to close, un unable to close the games. Two of those draws come from three twos when they were in favor and one of them last match day which just came from them uh, managing to bring it back on the last map. So. What we have right now is to look at Denali Esports, our last um, match of the day. Um, if they can win, they might be able to get themselves into the offline finals. But for now, it's those top six I'm looking forward to. Very impressive that Evil Panel Squad with all those roster changes as well, I have to mention. 
mm. that they're so high up in third. Yeah, they have really been performing quite well, as you said, with all those changes in mind. And and the big point of today was the one thing we wanted to point out, not only because of C play being up that high, but also denial being that low, is because the next games they come have coming up for them are very difficult. And one of them being today, we'll be up against the very first in the league, Virtus Pro. And that does take us on to today's games. And there's a lot of good teams playing today. Some won't necessarily have the impact on the league as others, but nevertheless, we're going to see some brilliant tanks. Yeah, Lucky Cracky versus Drew Leprechauns is not really like a, an important match because it's very unlikely that either one of these two will actually um, qualify, I think. Um, yeah, they're, they're just out Dream of the Dream Leprechaun's in ninth. Yeah, they might be able to pick up a few points, um, bring them to 12, the same as TCM and Cplay. But because of their match difference, they won't win out in that uh, in that respect. Lucky Cracky really far down as well, sitting at nine points, so it'll bring them up to pretty much the same situation. The next game, we have Kazan Crew versus School Bus. Much of the same, just on the other end of the table. School Bus might be able to get themselves above um, Evil Panel Squad into third. And Kazna Crew won't be able to catch uh, Virtus Pro, so they'll just get nearer. It's really that last game which we have to talk about. Yeah, Virtus Pro up against Denial. We've said Denial have been kind of towing the line before they turn up at the end of the season. But the way the play days have now been going with the slightly um, more condensed play days, you know, mm. there are a lot more games going on, they don't have the extended time to be able to maybe depend on the late game season because now they've pretty much got a face on the very top of the of the entire league. Yeah, they've got a face first pro first, the Russian Giants sitting right at the top of the league with 24 points undefeated so far. Only Dream Leprechauns picking up one map on Ensk against mm. them. Um, and then they've got a flight school, fight school bus the next match day. Another very tough opponent, not unbeatable. We've seen them being quite a few times before. Yes. They, they, they crumble very quickly. Evil Panel Squad comes to mind. And the last match, which is going to be against Kansas Crew, second in the league at the moment, <laughs> So very, very hard matches for them. Yep. In my opinion, they have to win two of them. One, if they get extraordinarily lucky, but honestly, two will guarantee them a, a safe spot. And if they really, really, really want to be 100% safe, they have to win every single one. Yes, and there's no harder way to prove your worth into that top six to be able to qualify. You know, anywhere around that mark of feeling safe is by beating the very best. But they've not had a great season, so we have to keep our eyes on that one. But you guys at home, this is a big play day with a lot of kind of fan favorites in the mix. A lot of teams you guys should know for some time. Whether there's been roster changes or not, you'll still know the core lineups. And it's all about people getting involved, isn't it, Melly? Absolutely. That's what we want. We want you to get involved. So head over to facebook.com slash WGLEU and vote for your favorite team. And uh, by voting for your favorite team, in first place, we see what you guys at home think. And that's always nice since we want you to get involved. And the next thing is uh, you can win bonus codes by simply uh, participating in one of our challenges. And they start before a matchup. So, um, Underneath that sad poll, there is a comment section where you only have to predict the exact scoreline of the current matchup. And uh, yeah, by guessing right, yeah, I think guessing right is uh, pretty easy for you guys as you showed the last match days. And uh, you get a chance to win one of three bonus codes. And those bonus codes contain a T2 light, 1K gold, seven days of premium and a Garrett slot. So I think it's worth par uh, participating. And the next... Um, platform you can actually get involved is Twitter. Just head over to Twitter, twitter.com slash WGLEU and uh, follow us, of course, and tweet us by simply using the hashtag WGLEU. So get in the conversation, send us your, uh, send us your match predictions there as well. And of course, everything else what's on your mind. So if you have any questions regarding the teams, regarding a certain player or a tank or a lineup, maybe like something like what tanks are the best to get into competitive gaming, like which yeah. line, li lineup I could use best by mm. only having uh, 42 tier points to spend. So that could be a nice question Oli could definitely, definitely answer. And um, yeah, so everything what's on your mind, just head over to Twitter and tweet us by simply using the hashtag WGLEU. Simple as that. It keeps it nice and easy there. And to give you guys maybe a little bit better idea of who you're going to be voting on, who you should be predicting to pick up these games, because you guys do want to obviously get that premium, the tanks in there, all those brilliant codes from Melly, let's give you a little closer look towards the lineups we're about to be watching. First game between Lucky Karaki and the Drooling Leprechauns. There's a good couple of players we need to be looking at, mostly for me on the side of Lucky Karaki. 
Yeah, Lucky Karaki have been actually quite impressive this season. Um, they're not sitting particularly high, but they've got a lot of good results on them. And considering that they were really like 11th and 12th once here in the season before, um, they've stepped up a lot. They, they've really become a better team. And it, it may be just down to the fact that this season's been so stacked and so hard for every team that they're not sitting in that top six. Um, yeah. Because I, I think they do honestly have the skill to be there. Kelly is my favourite player altogether. and very impressive. McMoney has also been impressive. And of course, uh, Kirak, the team leader there for Lucky Kiraki. And on the side of Drudy Neprocorns, um, Jack has been pretty up there. The Kempi, obviously, um, unfortunately, their main player, Muppy, has got to join the yeah. army so he's not going to be in uh, in in rotation at all for during the Epicorns, the Finnish team obviously we're still conscri uh, conscription and all of that um, so two two decent teams. I think they're on a pretty similar level. Dream Leprechauns have impressed a lot. Um, you know they did well against mm. TCM last week, but they just have to they have to get a little bit more consistency. And honestly, these two teams do represent what's quite classically a new team in World of Tanks, um, at least in the league. Yeah, they have a, the occasional good result, but they have a lot of inconsistency and they don't always get the wins they should do. Which I think is something we should look towards season five. Because I said before, this matchup doesn't really give them the possibility to get in that top six. It's more about who they'll end up facing in the uh, relegation matches in the Silver League. Yeah, also very important for them, obviously, as a team. And I want to point out, you're talking about some of the players, but money for me has been phenomenal throughout yeah. this tournament. Um, already picking up 44 kills, higher than the likes of Apple. Wow, higher than a hell of a lot of others. Hyber is way far below. He's actually tying with New Mold Show and Ural Fish at the moment for the top kills in this, this entire season. So that's absolutely phenomenal from a player who's just kind of coming into this. And we can kind of look back at what we were saying before about these ideal lineups we kind of wanted to see and I'd love to see him there with you know better leadership maybe or mm. you know more supportive te you know, team players around him I'd love to see that coming through and obviously do get involved with what your ideal sort of lineup would be for maybe an all-star kind of mashup of all the teams in the EU league with that hashtag WGLU but I think we're near on ready for the uh, first game so we can start talking about the first map it's going to be Cliff mm. a bit of an open ordeal not played out like most of the open maps however it's got its own kind of flavour to it do you think we're going to see that push coming out today i would like to see a, a quick game from these two lucky cracky has slowed down a lot during leprechauns also mm. a pretty slow team i think they're quite reactive though so it really does depend on the matchup uh tank lineups triple mx 3090 wc69 double tier one for Lucky Cracky, the Polish team, and pretty much the same for Drudy Leprechauns, just yeah. an extra T69 instead of the AMX 3090. So triple T69, double AMX 3090, double tier one. But you know, when we're talking about Cliff a little bit, we are into uh, test two of 9.2. Everyone's played it, and they've seen from the north that with all the cover added, the little village you've got on the path going towards the lighthouse, it's going to be very, very, adv I don't know. It, for me, it's going to be advantageous to play the north. Obviously, it's going to come out before the season four finals, which are mm. towards we're coming towards now. Um, so we have to see how that one plays out and how that will affect the results there. It's just something you guys have to keep in the back of your mind a little bit. Yeah, keep that in mind. But I think the teams are just about ready getting in their tanks as we speak. So we can start looking towards the final prediction. Who's going to pick this one up? I think Julian Apricorns might. I'm going to go for the opponents. But nevertheless, let's get ready for the first map. Cliff. And welcome into the first map, Cliff, as promised. And in the north in blue, it will be the drooling leprechauns facing off against Lucky Karaki in the south in red. What are we seeing coming out of the uh, leprechauns first Just of all? the standard stuff. I think Karex is going to head towards the um, the kind of covered place there so he can shoot the guys coming on towards the lighthouse. Uh, Sensei, Snake, Eye, Finn, Jack, Message all heading up towards that lighthouse and towards the, obviously the right Muppety in a tier one. Just going to be making sure there's nothing pushing along there. Um, not sure if that's actually Muppety since he's in the army. It's probably someone else just playing his account. Um, and for Lucky Cracky, pretty much the same thing. Um, they're keeping tier one quite far back and the T69s didn't seem to have got the greatest spawns in the world. So they are, of course, um, unable to support the beginning. And that's really the advantage, uh, the advantage at the uh, beginning for the north. You, you can get the tier 69s in strange positions and push around. Um, but you won't ever be there quite as quick from the south. So you can quite often get rushed. But Dream Leprechauns haven't gone for that, nor have uh, Lucky Cracky, so it's going to be a tentative start from these two. Kelly does receive the first bit of damage there, down to 902. I believe that's probably from 
T69, I do believe. I'll have to look at the penetration hole. Obviously, heat just leave a very small hole. APCR leaves a big gash in there, so two difference at least. Uh, you can see Jack, he's going to be pushing Snake Eye Finn. We see this a lot from the teams um, up a little bit. T69, great gun depression, so perfect position from him. Yeah, so we'll see how that comes into effect. Uh, hopefully Kelly can survive on 902 HP. Let's have a little look around. I don't actually see the impact, so I have to wait and see if it comes into effect. Probably in the track, later on. maybe. Yeah, so that would be, be APCR. Yeah, but we'll see if that really does hinder them later on. It looks like Kelly's getting a little bit of a nudge out to maybe towards the lighthouse, but doesn't seem to have paid off there as Bishu in the T69 just keeping eyes across. And all in all, as you said, a tentative start from these two. And even without, you know, let's say the rankings on the line, the qualifying spots coming through towards the Silver League and how they re-qualify in, yeah. obviously it's going to be in their minds. So they want to make sure they're getting these victories in. And Lucky Cracky and the Leprechauns, both in a similar boat here, new to the league, new to the way we play things out. They must be a little cautious, must be careful, and they don't want to throw games away here. They're on a very close marker between the two. Um, and, and for you, who's the key player who could do a real bit of difference there for the Leprechauns? Message has been absolutely fantastic. He's actually sitting at the top in terms of damage for this Finnish team. Um, you can see he's in a position basically to catch out what we've seen a lot from the south, which is a flanking AMX 1390, you know, coming around and trying to catch out, for instance, the T69, which is usually just up here. So Muppetine Message is basically covering it off. He's got a few bushes in front, so a good amount of camo, about 40 to 60 percent, depending on the thickness of the bush, of course. Um, yeah, but, you know, it's an important match for these two. Um, in general, it's an important matchup, as you were speaking a little bit about the Silver League, Silver Series, I should say. Um, you know, the first two obviously qualify automatically, which is now uh, GG well played and those poor bastards. Um, but that's that. Those um, those two are going to go straight through, of course, replacing uh, 11 and 12. But everything up to the, from there to seventh is going to be played off in the relegation matches. And um, obviously, you want to be playing the ones further down the silver series. So that's what these two pretty much are playing for. Though they still have a chance of qualifying into the top six for the season. So a lot of a lot of hard questions, a lot of hard decisions, and a lot of important games for these guys as they still have two or three games to play. Um, before the 30th of July, which is when this season ends. Yeah, six minutes on the board as well. We are starting to see that time starting to run out. And the teams have to start considering their real options in this matchup, at least. Bishu there in T69, now joined again by Shock. And they have just been around this area the whole time, back and forthing, never really staying around too long. And I'm surprised they don't have anyone out towards that West Hill. We've seen occasionally being used just to get those side shots on. But then again, and they don't really have that many people keeping eyes on. They've got money and Matt maybe keeping it in mind a little further back in the 1390s. But certainly an area we've seen utilized from the team in the north on occasion. Jack once again appearing. But I've got to say, Lucky Cracky haven't really been able to get that much information on the positioning of the Leprechauns. If maybe they spotted that little West Peak that came out from the likes of Message & Co, they might have been able to go for a little bit of an overmatch by pushing over the top, but they have no real players there to actually find out that information. So five minutes and 25 left. Any sort of moves coming out from the Leprechauns? Well, Leprechauns still have their tier ones to kind of throw away. Obviously, they're a little bit important, but not that important. So, Mapity's going to go forwards in that tank and hopefully trying to spot something out. He really wants to find it for Message, who's just below him and towards the left. You can see he's got the line of sight. So, anything that was there will get spotted. Lucky Cracky has nothing up here, so they can't really counter that move. But again, Dream Leprechauns, they, they don't really want to go forwards at this point. They are trying something out, which is unlike Lucky Cracky. Um, who are just still, as you said, sitting below the lighthouse. Muppety starting to head around. He's obviously going to go backwards first because if you go backwards first, you can drive faster forwards than you can backwards. It's basically, you know, every player has to learn that at some point. And the amount of people I see just driving straight head first <laughs> into a bush and then when they try and get out of a bad situation once they've spotted and they've shot, they just, they're mm -hmm. just reversing at 20 kilometers instead of driving forwards at like 60 kilometers yeah. so the big difference Mac Money Matt Piel as you can see 2 MX 1390s heading around from Lucky Cracky 4 minutes and 23 seconds left on that clock and the first bit of movement from this Polish team yeah I'll be interested to see where they play this one out on Matt Piel and Matt Money as you said splitting off towards the west side heading over in those 1390s lots of speed lots of options still available towards them and they could possibly catch out message but they don't really understand where they are they've only really spotted Jack and a couple at the start haven't really had much information information beyond that but Muppety has been found so 
Wow. <laughs> Two shots missed, but money and Matt PL. I was talking you up with money, and now you've absolutely let me down. Um, and Muppety did damage them as well. 25 <laughs> off Matt PL, 15 off uh, Mac Money. So it's good 50 damage done by him. Uh, 45 damage done by him, I think. And considering, yeah. you know, we can occasionally get those really low rolls of damage done, it's always good to have a little bit of a buffer, even yeah. it, it can come down to that small amount. You never know. The amount of times I've seen tanks left on 6 HP or something obscenely small, you, you never know what you're in for. And I said that weakness coming around that west side of that small hill, it looks like maybe the Leprechauns want to try and exploit that. Yeah, but the thing is, Crix should be there really with Snake Eye, Finn and Jack, because those two MX-39s would spot below. But Julian Leprechauns had the perfect opportunity just to push those three in here. So Message should have flanked straight around, but it's just bad positioning. Um, if Sensei was up here, it would be three versus three. So as long as they engage properly, they could have won. Krex is down below. Um, he should have already, he, should, he shouldn't even be there anymore. I mean, Message is basically doing his job for him and doing it better considering his position. So he's a waste of space at the point. Matt Piel and Message exchange a shot each. Uh, Mess is trying to get out of there. A little bit of danger. He's got to scamper his way down. There's a little bit overkill, in my opinion. But he does get out of there unharmed, only uh, doing some damage to his track. So, miss opportunities from Dream Leprechauns. Yeah, a bit of a shame then. Obviously, once again, we do say we do have the 2020 vision of absolutely everything. But then that was pretty much laid out for them. And some of the play coming out wasn't exactly uh, all that ideal. They gave an opportunity which you didn't necessarily have to give. And, you know, those positional issues, let's say, of, you know, players not quite being in the right place at the right time sometimes, is that due to a lack of communications or maybe experience? Um, I'm not sure why they didn't push then, to be honest. Um, I think Corex could have got back to Jack and Snake Finn. If you can see, he only has to drive about, say, that's 80 metres, 100 metres forwards, and then it'll be four versus three. There was literally no reason why they didn't push then. I just, I'm not sure. And maybe they saw... The problem is these teams are thinking, oh, we've, we've still got three minutes and a half, three and a half minutes to play with, so let's wait to two minutes until we push. And now you can see they're going forward. But <laughs> they had more of advantage earlier. They didn't have to try and draw it out. You can see these guys, the three T-69s, all perfect hull down tanks going forwards. Sinto's on the mountain and of course a message towards the right. So it's going to be all of the tanks from Dream Leprechauns that can do damage gone forwards. They just need to find a Lucky Cracky. One minute and 35, 35 seconds to do so. And it looks like Lucky Karaki kind of expected this late push. They've gone into quite defensive positions. Kelly in cover, Money in cover. And they can just fire from there. You're seeing Jack taking a bit of a pounding early on. Bishu's the furthest forward. And he can just play around with that T69, peek out when necessary, get the shots down. He's got shock towards the east. He's got players behind him. He might be in trouble slightly from Sensei, but all in all, he's fairly safe here. And you know, even with this push coming in, the Leprechauns can't find that way through, really. No, they're not even trying, though. They're not pushing forwards. They've kind of gone half aggressive. They lost a little bit of damage, but as has Dream Leprechauns. More coming that way. Yeah, a little bit of fire coming back and forth. Jack taking a big chunk. Sensei receiving a fair amount there as well. I can imagine that was delivered from money um, over towards the south side. So, cautious. Fire coming through. Bishu again taking one. He's... He's kind of in a bit of an awkward position, I've got to say. He's getting the fire from Sensei and also trying to avoid the main amount of tanks like Kyrix and Jack. So you can see him kind of being pincered in. Message as well, getting a couple of shots through. And with 30 seconds left, I don't think there's time for this now. Uh, but uh, Message is doing a good job from the side. I don't, as you said, not enough really time to do the amount of damage. But it's going to be some garbage time damage coming on to Lucky Cracky. Certainly, Dream Leprechauns are doing pretty well. But Kyrix going down to Hunt 151. Goes down as well. So at the moment, Lucky Cracky in the driving seat. But... 12 seconds, not much time to do so. Yeah, you're not going to get the win in 12 seconds, as much as I'd love to see it. Uh, nice ending little kill there for my money. He can add another one to his tally. But with five seconds left, we know the game is now going to be a draw out. Only two players lost in the entire time. And I've got to say it, both teams looking quite passive there, not mm. looking like they want to make the initial move. Um, is it just the first map nerves coming Yeah, in? a lot of teams are saying we don't want to push on the first map because once you get one map, it's a very easy to snowball yeah, and keep yeah, drawing. Guess. Um, but there was there was opportunities from Dream Leprechauns, mm. I mentioned it a little bit in game. When those two MX-39s got spotted out by Muppety below, there was like a, a good minute window then when Dream Leprechauns could have pushed forward. So what mm. they had to do is get corrects in that T T69, push it forward to where those uh, couple of T69s and Sensei and the MX-3090 were, and then just come off that hill um, as quickly as possible. Four versus three, it would have been a quite easy job. Message could have also gone further up and just took the flank. So massive missed opportunities for Julian mm. Leprechauns. Instead, what they go for is like the standard two minute mark push, which they didn't even really do. So yeah. they, did, they missed the opportunity for the reason of basically wanting to draw it. I don't really like that. I, I really don't like this kind of draw the first map. I understand it from a team's point of view. You don't want to give it all away just on the first opportunity. 
excuse me. Um, but I don't know. I, I'd like to see a little bit more from them, maybe testing out a little bit more. Um, because what real warm-up do you get from just sitting there like that? We saw you know, two players basically going down, one being a tier one and one was... I think it was, I'm not too sure. I think it maybe Kirex or something along those lines who actually got taken down. But, you know, that's not really a warm-up to this. I assume these guys have been playing prior to getting into the matchup. Hopefully they've been, you know, doing their training elsewhere. But to me, I'd like to see them going, in, going a little bit more for it, trying things out, playing a safe game, you know, keeping the tier ones back somewhere, pushing when the cap's maybe not completely a viable option. But, you know, it's, it's things like this that's slightly frustrating when I don't see them completely going for it or, you know, trying to get themselves to that little bit of a better plateau. But still, Cliff is a hard map to start on. It is quite definitive in its results. It's not exactly the most forgiving of maps. You know, if, if a team does find that overmatch, they're going to take it in an instance and push in. But I think we have to wait for the next one to come up. And what sort of maps do you think might suit one team more than the other in this one? Um, I actually quite like um, Dream Leprechauns on the more open maps. I think they're quite dynamic with their MX-1390 play. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, Lucky Cracky, they've been a little bit tentative on them, so I'm not sure how that's going to work out, but there's a lot more city maps than there are open maps, so you really want to be a team that's good at Himmelsdorf, Ensk and Ruhrenberg as opposed to being good at Prokhorovka and Steps, which are already very, very hard to win on. Mm. Whereas Ensk and Ruhrenberg and uh, Himmelsdorf are slightly easier. Maybe not Ruhrenberg, but at least Ensk and Himmelsdorf. So for me, I would always try and be better at city maps because then at the very least, you know, mine's a little bit more enclosed and you kind of have to play pretty similar tanks on those. So yeah. um, we will be moving on to Steps of the one we were just talking about. So for me on this map, Dream Leprechaun's slightly at, at an advantage. Mm. So I think Lucky Cracky are going to pick something a little bit more heavier. Maybe the T32s, Pershing yeah. and IS-3 could come in there if they're really feeling like they don't want to go for the win. Um, and that's really been the, the theme mm. for this season, which I think is a bit of a shame. The first two maps are almost always draws. And then between then and, and the end of the game, it really just depends on, you know, if they actually want to go to the, go for a win or they want to mm. see an opportunity go in. And I think that's more just down to the way the game is playing at the moment yeah. um, and the kind of rule set we've, we've put in. But for Lucky Cracky, double AMX 5100, IS3 times two AMX 3090, double tier one. So very this unusual lineup from Lucky Cracky. Do they know it's Steps and not Himmelsdorf or Ensk? You know, I, I'm looking it's at this. It's just like, um, it's just like a Prokhorovka lineup more than, um, I know Prokhorovka, um, uh, the Ruhrenberg lineup then yeah. Steps for sure. So a lot of firepower. I mean, the reason why you don't pick the 5100 on Steps is because it's literally a box on, on track. So very easy yeah. to hit. Um, doesn't have any gun depression at all, so where you usually play over towards the trench side, you want to be able to peek over and make mm. the shot, so the 5100 won't work there. Um, and for Dream Leprechauns, Triple AMX 1390 Pershing, Jack usually plays a T69, and indeed he's going to pick it double tier one. So a lot more classic for Dream Leprechauns, but a lot harder to deal with from Lucky Karaki. Yeah, I, I'm not sure about this lineup. Guys at home, let us know your thoughts on this usage of heavy tanks on steps. We've seen occasionally the IS-3 coming IS to play T32, here. Yeah. That's not a bad option, but this is something com completely unorthodox. Let us know your thoughts using that hashtag WGLEU. And let me know what you think of Lucky Karaki's rather heavy lineup coming into this one. Is it a defensive gameplay they want to come out with? It sounds like it, but still a lot of firepower there. Let's see if they can use it because we are ready to go into our next map, Steps. And welcome into battle number two, Drilling Leprechauns in the north in blue with that more classical lineup here. Facing off against Lucky Karaki in the south in red with that hefty, heavy lineup. Looking a little bit more like Ruenberg than Steps here, but still. What are we seeing these guys go for so far? Well, uh, you, you saw Drew Leprechaun's definitely heading towards the uh, trenches. We'd expect from the north. And Lucky Cracky, you know, we've seen it before with the, the slower, the faster lineups even. But with this slow lineup, they've also decided to go towards that right side. And I think what they might do is just push in very hard. They got a lot of firepower, a little bit more HP with the IS-3. The 5100 also have 1,400. So a little bit more HP to play with there as well. They've just come off reload those 5100s. They've got about 50 seconds, 49 seconds. So, Lucky Cracky, 
they have drilling leprechauns in good position. Now, if I was them, I would definitely go for that early aggression. Send the IS-3 in first. It's going to be able to bounce, absorb, do all sorts of things with that armor, um, which the uh, drilling leprechauns are really going to struggle with. And you can see the real guy who drilling leprechauns have to rely on is this guy, Snake Guy Finn. He's playing the Pershing, 268 millimeters of penetration of the T1E5M E2M2. So he's the only one who can consistently do damage to Lucky Cracky. And he's got great hold down tank as well. The mantlet can absorb some damage. So for him, he's the most important player. And he just needs to do it perfectly. Just doing the sporadic bit of damage, keeping Lucky Cracky on their toes. And then when they do push, hopefully he's done enough damage to actually stop them from winning that push. Hmm, we'll see if that one actually falls out of the way. Uh, interesting positioning out from Money here. Uh, propping himself up a little bit. We saw Sensei doing something fairly similar for the other side, but... Looking to see what he can really find from here, and I, I, I'm surprised seeing the 1390 used in this sort of fashion rather than being almost the scout for them. But he did do that job at the start, but he is right far at the back now. McMoney just chilling out, waiting for it to happen. Whereas Bishu, Kelly, McMoney, Matt Piel, all the others are just focusing on this direction. And I, I'm not sure what the game plan is because they're leaving a lot up in the air here and we do see the first couple of shells coming through Sensei being caught out by Shock he does have a little bit of an angle on him here with that IS-3 and Sensei needs to be careful that's a lot of damage coming through for the initial shot there yeah 358 damage although a little bit low the average damage of that BL-9 still a good amount of damage for um, hitting an Amex 1390 down 742 um, so that's about 20% I guess um, so Zenzai's got to be a little bit more careful, so Lucky Cracky know that he's in that position. So um, they kind of cornered him if they went forwards. I mean, Jack and Corex wouldn't be able to do that much damage um, towards the IS-3 and if the 5100 pushed at the same time. So Lucky Cracky certainly looked like they, they want to try uh, a few things. They, they said their team speed dropped on Cliff, so that's why they, they didn't push forwards. So, you know, that's the kind of missed opportunity for Dream Leprechauns they had. Not only did they have the better positions, they also had the other team without a team speak. Obviously, they couldn't know the latter, but still, yeah. it would have been a great, <laughs> great move if they did push. Then, uh, Jack making a couple of blind shots. Uh, Bishu being found there, in um, of course the uh, AMX 5100. So a big easy target for Dream Leprechauns. Yeah, not a great deal of cover for these guys if they do get fully caught out. But it looks like the Leprechauns are a little bit he you know, hesitant. They don't want to just push straight in. Um, God Almighty, the IS3 once again laying down the fire. Uh, I can imagine that shock actually taking a couple of pot shots. He has lost vision of Sensai, but I'm pretty sure he's well aware he's still around that marker. But shock backing away a little bit. Even Sensai to just play things out. And God, that shot really did hammer it home. So at the moment, six minutes and 15 seconds left. Uh, we still have Kelly and Bishu waiting down here. We did see Bishu was spotted out a little earlier on. Uh, in that 5100. No surprise there. It's, it's pretty hefty, as you said. It's basically a box on wheels. So Bishu being a little bit more careful, though, but still, he does have Kelly right next to him. So easy enough to uh, try not get turned upside down if they do get pushed on towards. And all in all, it looks like Lucky Cracky not really going for any moves here. They're just happy waiting it out and seeing if the push comes towards them. Yeah. Um, they have to be careful, but these guys are having kind of like a Mexican standoff. They're looking each other in the eyes and they're saying, um, <coughs> you know, who's going to be able to shoot first? And to be honest, you know, I don't like Jaloon Leprechauns and Lucky Cracky as teams with their, this this kind of gameplay. And um, they've shown it before. I think these two have been pretty stack, static and boring for, throughout the season. You know, Jaloon Leprechauns were pretty quick and dynamic at the beginning, but we've seen time and time again these two have been slow. Um, boring and, and really not any good to watch. Um, I, I really can't get over that match between Fro Freefall and Drew Leprechauns. That was really, really bad. And, you know, Freefall sitting above them a little bit and just say that they are still a team in contention as a as a, a top team for that, st that top six uh, at the end of the season. Obviously, um, the season four finals, while we have a little bit of time coming up. Um, in the near future, obviously, keep an eye on eu.wgleague.net for more information. Also, wildertanks.eu, as per usual. We'll have all the information where the Season 4 Finals will be held and what it's going to be all about, because it's going to be amazing, as per usual. Um, a lot of cool features um, coming in for then. Obviously, everyone's seen the 9.2 Spectator mode um, being tested, and that's going to make it a lot easier for us to broadcast the games and um, a lot more enjoyable for you as a result. So a lot of See cool things coming in. Speaking of that, I was watching, I think it was Rukil play it. Can he go first person? Um, 
No, a lot is actually a. It's a rumor, and it's not correct. Uh, it can't okay. go first person. Um, it's one of those things which war gaming does, and generally game developers do. They add features, and if people like them, then they develop them further. So I imagine uh, this is completely unconfirmed, and I don't really know. Um, if people like the spectator mode, and it's used a lot, and people need it, then it'll be oh. utilized further. Wow, Bishu goes down though. As I was saying that in a matter of seconds, so massive advantage there for Lucky Cracky as he did try and scamper off that hill and really fail miserably to get away. Yeah, that's the, f the f absolutely obscene firepower of these 5100s, though, just coming into effect. As soon as he pushed up that hill, Shock did the early work and they just finished him off in, what, a matter of three shells, I believe, if not slightly more. They tracked him, which was... Yeah, that's... <laughs> you're not going to be able to escape from that. So, yeah, the uh, burning hunk of wreckage there, pretty much um, keeping him under wraps. Ouch. So he tried to get off, he got tracked, and yeah, game over. That's really depending on Lucky Cracky as a team that can actually hit those shots. I um, mean, it doesn't really mean that Julian Leprechauns will obviously have to go 100% uh, um, defensive, and Lucky Cracky being very slow to push up, actually. Um, Julian Leprechauns, they pretty much have to go for the draw. They might actually be able to put on a little bit of pressure with the tier ones and the cap, but um, I don't think they're going to be able to manage to do that in enough time. So two minutes and 49 seconds. One tier one still back for Lucky Karaki. You can see Julian Leprechauns have a, a guy, Tolo, also keeping the cap under control, but the rest of their team all in defensive positions now. Well, let's see if Lucky Karaki are willing to make a move here. Tanks showing up left, right, and center. The Leprechauns will be well aware of the move coming out. Shock actually retracting back. Uh, interesting play. Maybe looking to make sure there's not a counter cap happening. They're leaving tanks in interesting spots as well for uh, Lucky Karaki as they are pushing players forward. Kelly still sat back in the 5100. Shock, probably going to join him here. Um, is this just to make sure there's no counter cap happening? Yeah, they're just going to sing back because that's like the only way true Leprechauns could win. They can't actually win the firefight. They could barely win it with Sensei alive. So with him dead, you know, MX-39 does a lot of damage. It's going to be very hard for them to keep up with um, Lucky Cracky. They'll probably have to go for that second reload engagement. Um, so the cap's the only 100% option they can actually win. That's why Lucky Cracky can at least put a little bit of resources towards there to make sure that they can't do so. Jack trying to hit a couple of shells onto McMoney and Lucky Cracky also think that they have to get the cap on the way because with one minute in 40 seconds and the faster tanks from Drew Leprechauns, they'll be able to run away. Yeah, McMoney joined by Matt PL does take down the tier one. It was to hello just keeping control of the north we're seeing finally the pushing coming out from lucky cracky shock is making his way back up they all are jack getting swatted away then that t69 taking a pounding from mag money you don't want to be facing this man down he is a stunning shot in that 1390 hitting shell off shell one more will do the job and of course he's going to land it towards jack so now the cap has begun and they need a lot of tanks in here. Yeah, Bishu uh, and Professor uh, Snake Eye Finn, correct, all starting to pummel Bishu there in the 5100. Yeah, but here comes Matt PL. Kelly has found message. So clock still a little close here. Uh, Matt's going to have to do some serious work if he wants to keep control of this. He's pushing forward, trying to keep a little cover on Snake Eye Finn, going on the rotate. Smart play from him. He knows that IS3 just doesn't necessarily have the speed to keep up with him, but let's find out if he can land those shells. Finally comes to hold. Nice work comes out. 419 damage done. That's a bit more uh, damage to be dealt. 18 seconds left on that cap. You can see him lining up in there. Focus now comes down towards Snake Guy Finn. We've still got Kelly coming around to support as well. Kirex needs to be dealt with. Can Kelly land these shells? Can he get him dealt with? Kirex going back. Two seconds left. One second. I don't think he landed the shot. He missed it. They just need to... Oh, he reset just in time, but it's too little, too late. Surely, base has been captured. Lucky Karaki get the victory. And that came right down to the wire. Unbelievable that the heavy tank um, action actually worked. And that's def yeah. basically down to Sensei actually trying to get off that hill. If he'd stay there, they would have been okay. But Lucky Cracky, they're kind of changing the game a little bit. They've got a lot of heavy tanks, and it means they could Why do not? a lot of damage. And with the AMX 5100 being that position, they definitely could just put the tanks behind it, using, as I said, the box on wheels to mm. put smaller boxes behind it. But what Dream Leprechauns need to do is basically use the speed of the MX-39 to, to rotate around and come from the behind of, uh, of um, Lucky Cracky. They were too static. They tried to get themselves into classic defensive positions. What yep. they should have done is use their speed and go into not so classic um, position, which were unpredictable. Mm. And Lucky Cracky would have still drawn that one out. Do you know what? I actually quite like the way Lucky Cracky picked that heavy lineup, almost forcing then the Leprechauns have to make the counter move when they went on the aggression. Yeah. I thought it was going to be a, a pretty much a passive game through and through them between these two there. But I like the way Lucky Cracky then forced the hand of the opponents and 
sadly for the Leprechauns, they didn't read it right. As you said, they could have played that a lot better. But still, all in all, 1-0 now to Lucky Karaki. They're certainly working things out. And I like that little bit of uh, kind of adaption to the way the game plays out. Because even I was very surprised seeing that heavy lineup coming through on such an open map. But it worked very well. Question is, could they pull something like that again? As Prokhorovka is going to be next. We've seen caps with a lot lighter lineups. You don't have to run that IS 350 100 sort of mm. stack. Um, is this a map you think they could do well on? Um, well, their, their sister team, Freefall, have been very impressive on this map. They went for that double push through the north and from the south mm. uh, and from the middle at the same time, catching the team in the middle. And I think. You know, these two obviously scrim a lot together, they play a lot together, they play in the same clan. So I imagine pretty similar tactics. And if it does work once, it can work twice. I'm not mm. sure if Lucky Cracky, there are a team that do a lot of um, of homework, but I'm not sure if they can actually um, be able to adapt to that ta tactic. So that's certainly a possibility, um, but it does depend a lot on the lineups. I think DRL was going to go for another quick lineup, a lot of firepower, a lot of speed. And Lucky Cracky is a team that, remember at the beginning of the season, pick for instance a triple AMX 5100 on Cliff. Yeah. So they love playing with those heavy tanks. Strange, strangely enough, they're not particularly good at city maps with heavy which tanks, which, which you would think you would have, you know. Mm. Um, but they, they just don't seem to have the um, heavy tank coordination, which is really necessary. And I think that does say something for the game in general. It's more about who you are as a player as opposed mm. to who you are in that tank. You know, take the player, not the tank. Well, we'll see what they choose this time around. We aren't seeing them fully locking in that lineup just yet. And, you know, I, I like the way Prokhorovka has been changing a little bit. It used to be a very polarizing map. And I like the varying tactics we've seen actually to forge a victory. One being Virtus Pro slow creep across the map towards the village. Um, that's always been absolutely beautiful to watch. But we've seen a lot of captures now coming into effect. A lot of teams play off the cap. I'm trying to think of who played it out very well with that aggression towards the north. Mm. Happy to go over the railway, which is yeah, very rare. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I, I, it might have been actually. I think you're quite correct. And that was absolutely perfect to witness. Um, I'd love to see something like that. I'm not sure if either of these teams would be willing to try something as... Uh, a little bit dangerous it, it may not always work out but you've got to have the confidence to go for it but still i think we're slowly seeing the tank lineups actually being picked here but yeah i what sort of tactics do you think these guys might use do you think there's a cap possibility here between these two or it will be a cautious game i'm not sure i mean the cap seems to always be the kind of initial engagement and then mm -hmm. a lot of teams once they've put the pressure on the cap and they've forced um the move from the other team that they actually mm -hmm. try and go for the kills so it's kind of that one two situation but for lucky cracky Triple T69 double MX1390 double T1 as we would expect and uh, Dream Leprechauns this time go for something a little bit heavier. Triple MX1390 T69 and that American T32 there. So I think they're going to be a little bit more static and maybe, you know, push through the middle. We haven't seen a lot of teams with a T32 actually manage to get the win because it's True. pretty slow. And if they do get the win, um, it's because the other team usually makes a mistake. Um, because, you know, you need to at least take one tank down for that T-32 to go into towards the uh, combat location. We'll see if it might be the downfall of the Leprechaun, so let's get ready for the next map coming up, Prokhorovka. So welcome into the third map here between Lucky Karaki and the Drawling Leprechauns. Last the open map was picked up by Lucky Karaki in some very unorthodox style and it seems like you guys are backing them by a very small margin thanks to Melly updating us during the break. So keep your votes coming through onto Facebook and through Twitter using the hashtag WGLEU. But what sort of beginning are we seeing from these two right now? A little bit unusual. Drew Leprechaun's um, putting the T32 towards the right and it's going to be the question if they can actually get it into the proper location at the proper time. Um, obviously one of these guys haven't seemed to have put the correct time in as it's 15 minutes, it's supposed to be 10. Um, but oh well, and also from the north, the Lucky Cracky, heading up and towards the uh, city area, the village area, I should say, below the hill. Um, so they're gonna have to be a little bit more careful about what they do and, you know, if they get caught out, I think from the south, it's a lot easier to play from the, in towards the city than it is from the north um, because you can get into those locations better. But we've seen a lot of teams Specifically, Drew and Neprocorns, to be fair, being in the wrong position at the wrong time from the south. Well, let's see if this one works out. But Money and Kelly are splitting off towards the east side of this map. Let's see if this comes through properly here. And they have been spotted out. They know they've been spotted. And 
So far, the reaction isn't to retract. They're more getting set up here. You can see Shock and Matt Piel in the T69s further behind. Kelly McMoney still pressing forward. Kirex has been spotted out there. A couple of shells coming out of the T69s. Not going to connect just yet. But at the moment, who's got the advantage here? Well, what Dream Leprechauns has done is, is, is quite nice. They've kind of um, they've kind of cut the map off and they segregated um, Lucky Cracking towards the right side. Um, obviously, Lucky Cracky is a Cracky has a little bit uh, of resource to rise. Message getting caught for one shell there. Two five nine coming off him. He's got to be careful from the side as well. And he's pretty much caught out straight away. Yeah, Message in trouble. Sensei trying to keep him money and Kelly busy, but Message scampers away with his tail between his legs. Bishu even lets a couple fly towards him. But this is dangerous positioning from Amani and Kelly. They know Sensai is just up on this hill. They knew that Kirex was just down. And I'm waiting to see the counterplay now coming out from the Leprechauns. Will they be brave enough to take a chance here or are they going to run away? This is a perfect play from DRL. Basically, keeping Sensai 50 meter proxy spot or just pro or just spot generally. They put the two hull down tanks here and they can basically just shoot the tanks on towards the hill very easily, very nicely. You do it on random battles, so it also works in... Um, in competitive play. You just need to get the spots right. Mapati is also heading over in the tier one. Sensei actually coming off. Uh, I'm wondering who's actually going to be able to do the spots as even the AMX 3090s are far down north and more of a defensive position. But as you can see, at least I'm right about um, the hull down tanks aiming towards the uh, upper middle area of that hill. But Snake Eye Finn starts to edge over towards the left. So message taking about half HP has is, is really caused a little bit of a change from DRL. Um, they know that they weren't particularly in a good position in towards the village, and it does say something about Lucky Cracky for allowing DRL to get out of the village without even a spot coming onto them. Yeah, a little bit of lacking play there. You can see the setup that they're working with, though. Um, Bishu and CNNK were always playing towards the north here on, along this road, keeping eyes down. Um, didn't really get much done, however, Bishu, sadly. Uh, Matt Piel joined by Shock in the T69s, more focused towards the city side, and as we saw, Kelly and McMoney over towards the hill. But now, the village is theirs, pretty much. What can they do with it? Um, I'm not sure if they can do much with it. I think it's more down to what DRL's going to do, because clearly with the AMX 3090s, that they, they want to try something. Um, Sensei's going very, very defensively towards the left. He obviously doesn't want to get caught out from the middle, but he doesn't really have to go this uh, long way round. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to go here and wait for the rotate, but I think what DRL wants to do is something similar to freefall. They can go forwards and put tanks towards the cap, um, but Sensei stopping. I'm not sure exactly what they have in mind, but right now he's in a complete use position. You can see the little bit of a hill, a little bit of a mound stops him from shooting anywhere on towards the map. Probably just mm -hmm. waiting for Curex and a certain amount of time to actually come off there. So um, a little bit of options for Drew Leprechauns. They are trying a few more things. Um, but it's really a question if they can actually get them to work. In my opinion, the best thing they can do is, is go for the cap in towards the base, use the, the, the hull down tanks towards the middle, and stop the cap um, from being reset, basically. Also, an AMX 3090 up north would basically spot them out. Or you can even, yeah, I think AMX 3090 would be the best, but you can 50 meter proxy spot, use the tanks that are in the middle to shoot them if they try and go, go across, and use them in the middle to auto stop them from going across. So, in my opinion, Drew Leprechauns have more options here on the board. Yeah, and it's become a very static game very fast. I don't think anyone's actually moving. I'm pretty sure, actually, they, they've cut, gone back to the lobby. It looks like it, doesn't it? Have they, have they, have they everyone stopped moving? Yeah. <laughs> I think so, at least. We'll wait and see. I feel as though that maybe yeah, what's happening right head now. head back to the garage. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty sure, at least. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to check what's going on. Yeah. Um, this man's going to give you an update as to what's happening in just a moment once he finds out. I'm uh, not too sure overall. Uh, but we can kind of give you guys an update as to what's happening elsewhere because apparently the votes have been pretty damn close, Melly. We'll go to Melly in a second, if possible. Um, she has been keeping eyes on you guys out there in the social media world. Um, as we did say, it was a very close um, voting going on. Was it 51%? Yeah, so while we're waiting on the teams, hopefully we can uh, tune in with Melly. Calling Melly. Yeah, Melly. back to the garage. <laughs> oh, finally! Here. Yay! Yay! Hey, 
Hey, Melly. So how's it going out there in the world of social media? Um, pretty awesome, actually. So um, I don't know. Now my computer is dying. I actually wanted to show you something very nice because we have a new feature on our uh, on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash WGLEU. So just head over yourself and check it out while well, I'm trying to get it to work. I fe feel like something is jinxing our show today. It's not me, I promise. <laughs> but we'll have it in a second. Um, there you go. That looks much better. So, um, what the hell? No, what is... Okay, wait a second. I got it. No, perfect. So if we head over to my <laughs> screen, I could show you. So this is our Facebook page, as you all should know. And um, I just unliked it to show you what's going to happen if you are not a fan of our Facebook page. So if you see, if see, if you see that registered uh, up below here, just hit poll. And then you get forwarded to our awesome app because we said that we want to give you bonus codes by simply participating in our in our vote. And so we made it like uh, obliga uh, oblig obligation, obligation, an obligation, Obli obligate. obligatory. You're That's what I wanted to say. No, you're obligated to do this. Well, it's, to or like or it's obligatory to do this. That, 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 that's what I was trying to say. Thank you very much. You're Ollie, trusting so Ollie's English. <laughs> no, I wouldn't be so sure. <laughs> that's the only thing he can do. <laughs> that GCSE. So, that GCSE. <laughs> so you just have to like our page, as you see. <laughs> and as soon as you hit like, you get forwarded to our vote. And yeah, it's this one. So just, I actually voted, so you can't see the vote yeah. but you have Who to did push. You vote for? it's pretty easy just push buttons for the teams you wanted to vote and as you see you your favorite um is definitely lucky karaki but very slight actually with 56 percent. so that was a close uh, short update from the social media point of view check it out yourself facebook.com slash wdl lauren Thank you so much, Melly. And I think the game is just about ready to get back in on to w underway. If I can speak English myself, let's go back in the game. I think they're I think they're moving this time, which is always a bonus. Yeah, and there's a rule in our in our. Basically, the problem was that they didn't put it to ten minutes. And there's a rule in our rule book that says the team that doesn't put in the correct time gets a technical technical defeat. So I think that was during Epicorn. So it's probably going to be one all at this point. Um, obviously playing this map still, we're going to have to check that one out of course. There's a lot of rules and I can't remember them all. Uh, Sensei spotting them out um, across the middle um, and it's, it's pretty much a similar start but uh, Drew Nepcorn's opting straight away to go towards the left and a little more aggressive in towards the middle for Lucky Cracky so. Well I feel kind of bad now because let's be serious, uh, Lucky Cracky last time we were able to catch out at least one player from the Leprechauns. Now the Leprechauns have changed up like we know you guys are going to the village, screw you, we're heading the other way. Uh, a little bit mean on them, but hey-ho, it's the way the cookie crumbles. Um, all right, now we'll see what they can do with uh, the Leprechauns on the complete other side of the map. I feel this might be a draw by uh, yeah. some way. Yeah, I agree. I mean, now they know what they want to do. There's no surprises. Yeah. And I think Drew and Leprechauns were a little bit ahead. Um, the tactics they wanted to do and the things they wanted to try um a slightly more advanced and look lucky cracky at least in this situation despite being you know one nil down after um being countered basically by the heavy tanks of lucky cracky tolo going quite aggressive and it, you know if i was them i would have just been like screw this we're gonna just go full in and basically catch the other team by surprise who think they're gonna do the same thing again and, and you just completely jinx them um you completely uh, bluff them and you know, you, you just go in and, and, and basically, uh, you know, do the damage before they even know what's hit them. Tolo's gone quite far forwards, and I think he's going to go towards the cap, 7 minutes and 20 seconds. So, at least Dream Leprechauns are still trying um, on this one to go and try and get the win. But a lot of things need to change for, for them still, and they need to get a little bit lucky. Um, as you can see, only Kirex and uh, Tolo towards the cap, and really the cap is what this season's been all about. A lot more wins coming out of the cap than we've seen in previous seasons where it's all been about the damage. Jack receiving 242 in the T69. So a couple of blind shots coming out from Lucky Cracky. One successfully hitting, which is pretty surprising actually. They're usually most of the time missed, but uh, it's that one which hits that gives you the advantage. I was going to say that was very skillful from Bishu. 
he was spotted. So was it? <laughs> yeah, the, okay. the player was spotted. Uh, to- Toilo went down, which is a big blow for uh, yeah. during Yeah, uh, Jack did appear on there, and Bishu just popped up and over the T69. So um, the blind shots do remain just as hard. Snake Eye Finn now appearing. Bishu might go for another one. Not fancying it apparently this time. Uh, there we go. Not going to connect, however. And the vast majority of Lucky Karaki are literally lining up here. Uh, Money watching through as well. Shock doing the same. Matt and Kelly over towards the village. And I believe there's a couple up on the hill as well there. Karakuso and seeing NK. But why are both tier ones up there? Um, they can they can spot very far across. You can see the um, the entrance towards the village from the south side is over those uh, rail carts just in front of them. Um, one of them's there, basically, is probably going to come off. Um, the second one there is to spot. That's the NNK on the left. And both of them at some point will also probably head towards the cap. It basically means that they're in the cap at the same time and they're spotting at the same time. Yes, not the greatest use of resources, but if you have a specific use of them, you have to put them in the same place, especially if you want to cap with any you know, decent speed. You know, it really True. does half the speed every time. Sensei is still far down there for Drooling Leprechauns. He's basically going to be the one in charge of decapping at some point in time. Um, but we're now heading towards the five minute mark. Well, should be 10 minute mark considering we had one reset already. Bishu <laughs> in the middle getting spotted out and Drooling Leprechauns, Lucky Cracky living a, up to their names. They're pretty static, pretty slow. Um, you know, these Lucky Cracky's been a team that's actually won on... on um, on the tank lineups they picked. They're very clever with the tank lineups. Mm. But as a team actually going forwards and, and trying things and reacting, they haven't been so impressive. Um, so they are definitely a thinking man team, which will only get you so far when it's a game about hitting those shots and you know knowing all the, the, the different specific weak points on tanks and you know the HP and all the kind of things that make you a great tanks player. That's where they sometimes lack in and you know, where, whereas Kelly is the only one and Mac Money maybe as well, the only two that really know those and understand those rules of the game. Yeah, certainly standing, well, outstanding players for Lucky Karaki. <clears throat> but right now, little movement from either side. Both happy to play a slightly more passive game, I guess. Once your initial plan's been played out once, you don't exactly do the same thing twice. And I, I get that, it's, it, it makes sense, but it's a shame that we're now going to be going into battle number four with only one real victory based off a tank, but it looks like the Leprechauns are trying to work their way across the map, or at least Snake Guy Finn is. Yeah, Snake Guy Finn's going to go right and basically go hull down. You know, if you pick a T32, you should really do this pretty quickly. Um, it, it's a great tank in these positions. You can see already, just trying to hit Snake Guy Finn, just bounces off the mantlet and then just absolutely no damage at all. 250 penetration, you'll even struggle from the front to penetrate the T32. So Snake Guy Finn in a great position now to do some damage against Lucky Karaki. Three minutes and 40 seconds, still enough time for the Finnish team to go forwards and actually take this win back, bringing it all even. As you said, going to the fourth map, very important as the uh, later stage of the match day comes on, uh, the matchup comes on. So Snake Guy Finn, good position. What can you do with it? Well, we can find out soon enough. We do have Kelly, Matt PL, and Shock. Uh, most of them back to Whaler from this area. Once he appeared, you can see them taking a little bit of a step back, and I don't really blame them. He'll have to put himself at least in a little bit of danger if he wants to land any of these shells. Shock and Matt are maybe using Kelly slightly as bait there if he does want to try and uh, overcommit towards that 1390. But outside of that, the rest of the team laying down the fire from afar. They have caught message out a little bit, but still, 2 minutes and 57 seconds, when's that cutoff time limit? It's about now, Snake Finn is definitely playing a little bit more aggressive, just peeks around a little bit, doesn't get spotted luckily enough. I think what he has to do is, it, it's pretty obvious, I mean, oh, not going to find anything, it, it's pretty obvious, he just has to rotate his turret um, and his tank, his superstructure around far enough so he can do the mouse trick and get the shots on. It'll also mean that when he tries to get out of there, you can just turn his turret and his hull a little bit around this way and then just drive straight down that hill. So it would be like 10 seconds to get off. Of course, he'll have Lucky Cracky from the side a little bit more, but um, I think it's worth it with such a little amount of time and neither team really wanting to go for the win. At least Strewn Leprechauns are far forwards. So you can see Message and Muppety, the tier one, and um, the MX-1390 have also joined Snake Guy Finn in a T32. So a few things happening, but and not a lot. I mean, it's it's fairly static game. I said this matchup would be pretty slow. Bishu Matt Money being spotted. Uh, Muppety is going to go in, probably suicide, but you get a little bit of information for it. Well, let's hope so. Death shouldn't be for nothing. Maybe trying to bait Shock out into the shot and then Snake Guy Finn gets one. Not going to go for it, however. 
One minute and 50 left. We are seeing slowly but surely the Leprechauns uh, get themselves over towards that central village area, leaving CNNK and Correct start their push down towards the camp here. The two tier ones finally pushed off that hill. And we have to see if that main fight does break out in the village. We still have a lot of tanks here. The push through has begun. They are going to focus onto Kelly massively. Kelly is really in trouble. Well, one shell comes in two. Make it three. Kelly's going to be going down very, very shortly. I don't know how Kelly's still alive. Finally, Jack lands the final shot, but the cap has begun. No one back there to deal with it just as of yet. Message though, lining up the shell. Can he hit them? They're just toying past with him. And I don't think he gets it. Kirix has found shock. We're seeing with money and Bishu now moving in. This could be dangerous. I think that message has found correct. That's one tier one down. Snake Eye Finn finding with money keeps the fight going. One minute left. Bishu, Matt, and CNNK still standing for Lucky Cracky against the four of the Leprechauns. If the Leprechauns get themselves here, right here, right now, they could do some serious damage. Bishu on the run. He's not going to make it out of this one alive. The T69 should surely not be able to outrun those 1390s if necessary. Sensei comes around the side, but it's Jack to claim the kill, leaving Matt alive and CNNK. CNNK is being hunted down by message near on cruel really and Matt trying to escape this one but there's nowhere to run either so at the moment it looks like the leprechauns will be tying this one up at one to one message taking a little bit of a beating there finally gets taken down but uh, Matt PL the last man alive has Sensai moving in that 1390 will come around and grab you in a second and Matt I think he knows it's over. Ooh, 15 seconds over left on the clock. Sensai's just reloaded. Yeah, Sensai's back off reload. Surely he's going to go down here. Matt, Matt, how are you alive right now? Sensai and Jack are both shooting him. Six seconds left. One job will do it. It'll be Sensai to claim it in the end as Jack came through. The Leprechauns finally picking up the map. Nice job from them. Um, it just shows when you actually want to go for it, you do get the win. Uh, and I think the best thing for for Dream Leprechauns in that mm. game was basically Message coming off, you know, leaving his team behind and saying, guys, I actually need to do the most important role. I need to get the counter cap from Lucky Cracky yeah. done and dusted out the way. Um, very, very impressive stuff. That was basically Lucky Cracky's thinking. We're going to play defensively, and if they push, we're going to put the tier ones in the cap, which is, in my opinion, a bad move, as you saw then, because Message did it correctly. And the fact that Dream Leprechauns when they push forward did such a good job of focus firing Kelly went down Kelly real quick out of out. the position so even though it was four versus four because message wasn't there yeah they still did a better job with less cover no I, I completely agree and uh, now I think it's tied one to one um, I'm hoping we can have a little look at the replay again so let's have a little look at what we've just seen there and this is Kelly just gone in an instance as soon as the message push is began. actually here. So they go five versus four, but message has enough time to basically go and reset and get back towards the, the cap. Really smartly done. You can see him focusing down towards the tier ones there. First shell not connecting. You can see the fight continuing on. And he just knows he can keep track of these tier ones. Eventually the shot does come through there, takes down Karak. And you can see the time limit now. 1 minute 18, he's got time to move up, take it down. He sees the fight is going well for his team elsewhere. And that's just very smartly done from the Leprechauns, using their resources well and making sure their focus was on the correct targets, which is such a big factor. I can't stress it enough, you know, focus fire towards the correct target yeah. and the right time to move away from the pack, knowing that your team's safe. So even though Message did move away, the team knew that they were in the more advantageous position. They could move in on the other tanks remaining and do the job. It got a little bit close just due to those reload timers and a couple of those shells just not connecting well enough. And obviously, aim is a big factor into it as well. Let's be serious here. But all in all, well played out by the Leprechauns. I wish we could see more of that from them. Yeah, I think they just need to um, be a little bit more experienced, but they had that last chance and they did take it yeah. and win it. So they are a good team. Um, and to be fair to them, also Lucky Cracky being a really, really... Um, a team that wins a lot on the tanks they picked. Mm. It kind of says, well, we're the better team, but what what um, Lucky Cracky won was more of luck and just what they decided to pick as a tank lineup. Yeah, so I think the next map coming up will be Ensk. So that was a big explosion, that by was, the way. There was a really big explosion in our office, so we're yeah. going to try and find out what that was. Melly's just going to head over there, so do excuse us for a second if uh, Melly does update us. Um, who knows? It was like a big old bang which I'm yeah. not sure if you picked up on but it like have heard it that. vibrated the studio yeah a little you bit. may have heard that at home so we're going to try and find out what the hell that was <laughs> um, but all in all Ensk being next we'll have to wait and see how this one goes down um, tank choices are still coming through and finally Lucky Cracky can play a heavy lineup on a heavy map yeah they can um they, they really do like them, but whether they can actually win with heavy line, line up on a heavy map, that's the real question. They've picked it on um, steps. They won it with it, won with it there. Whether they're actually going to win on this one, I'm not quite sure. Um, 
not been a massive fan of both of these on this map either. Lucky Cracky did win against Denali Esports. Mm. Um, and Drew Leprechaun also been a little bit shaky. So I think this is a pretty even matchup. I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen, but um, just the fact that it's even is going to make it a good game. Not, e not an easy map to draw on either 600 meters. You can't really want to run away that easily. Yeah, we did yeah. see Power Slide in the Grand Finals doing it, but <laughs> it's Power Slide. Yeah, yeah. How, how can you take him as like a normal factor? The yeah, guy is yeah. ridiculous. So they're the uh, external factors that can occasionally come in. But yeah, um, kind of want to find out what that noise was though. Originally, uh, <laughs> not going to lie to you guys. No. No. Wow. Okay. Well, that's slightly is, worrying. Sorry. What was it? Uh, there's still noise going on outside, apparently. Okay. Belly. Go and keep eyes on what's happening. <laughs> we'll try and find out. I'm always a little bit worried about living in Germany because there's a lot of explosives, yeah. the explosive devices, probably in the Rhine and also just generally yeah, on yeah. the buildings. Like there's every week there's a newspaper article about how they found an unexploded well, bomber. Kolaris, um, there was the yeah, sirens going the, off at his house. Yeah. Well, not at his house, but you know when they do find these, if they're you know building new construction or whatever, and obviously they unearth it, they have to evacuate the people from the area in case you know the worst happens. And Kolaris, being a big nerd, heard this going off. Someone knocked on his door trying to you know, say, excuse me sir, would you mind you know vacating the area while we try and deal with this? Him being a massive nerd, didn't really realize that That's someone had a natural selection important. working, in my opinion. <laughs> I'm just going to say. But yeah, he just stayed there like, I this, this can't People be People say natural serious. selection is no longer in the 21st Darwinism, century. Darwinism, bro. <laughs> I 100% disagree. Yeah, uh, a little bit worrying there. Uh, we are just discussing the rules, hence why we're just... Well, the teams are discussing the rules, hence why we're still just sat here like, what the hell. Um, but yeah, if you do live in Cologne and you just heard that, let us know what the hell is happening. Uh... <laughs> Kenniger believes it's on backfiring their car. Think that'd be a big car to be able to do that, like, Kenniger. It's not exa yeah. Bit bit too loud. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out hopefully. But yeah, we are still waiting on the team. So um, let's hope that uh, this doesn't take too long. I see the tank lineup soon to have come in at least. So I can imagine that's what they're going to be playing with. Um, IS3s, 5100s, no real surprises. Yeah, they've picked uh, triple. 5100 double IS3, double tier one, that's for Drooling Leprechauns. Um, double 5100 triple IS3 for Lucky Karaki. So the switcheroo between the French and the uh, Russian tank is really the only difference mm. between these two. Um, honestly, I prefer the triple 5100, even on a map like Ensk. Yeah, okay, you can play a little bit more dominance over towards the train side where you can go, you know, side scraping Maastricht or whatever you call it. Um, but for me, it's more about the 5100 damage than anything. Well, let's see that in effect as the teams are ready. Let's get underway towards Ensk. So welcome into battle number four. Ensk is now coming up between the Leprechauns and Lucky Karaki, now tied at one apiece. We'll find out who can chip and edge ahead on Ensk, one of the classic maps here. City-based finally, so those heavy tanks have their home to play in. And in the north in blue will be the Leprechauns leading us away. What are they up to? Um, looks like a normal-ish start. Jack Kirex heading over towards the uh, left side, going to be breaking as much wall as they can. Not sure if they're actually going to go towards the green zone. Muppety message going towards where they can get the cross off onto Lucky Cracky, get the shots on towards their side. If they do head over towards that green zone, which they're not doing, they're, they're sitting up in towards the uh, city area a lot more. Um, I'm not sure exactly what their plan is, but we've seen from a team like Lucky Cracky that even on Ruhrenberg, it's all about the city play. They're way too nervous and you know way too uncoordinated as a team yet to really um, to win engagements which take a lot of technicality like the green zone does like the uh, the uh, six seven line where those trains are all parked um, does you know you need to be very aware of where you are you need to be very aware of your putting resources because you can get flanked very easily so there's a lot of factors that come into into this which it may not seem as obvious um, may not seem you know all that obvious but they certainly are very important probably the most important things it's a game where everything adds up and uh, mm -hmm. you end up with a finished product and if that product's good enough then of course you end up winning if it's not despite you know putting a lot of work into it and um, it's just not good enough you don't end up winning so standard start from both these two teams although lucky crack is going towards the city 
Yeah, but but passive stuff from these guys. They haven't really committed, I feel, towards the city. Uh, Shock just laying down the fire down that one line, but Money holding on towards the two and three. Matt just supporting him there. And then Kelly and Karak joined around by Bishu, just making sure that six line push does not come out from the drawing leprechauns. So currently tied at one apiece. You can see why they're getting a little cautious and hesitant here. Ents generally does provide us with an outcome towards a score line, but these two being quite passive very early on may make that a little more difficult. We'll see if they can find a way through at the moment. Karak is really the only one uh, push like forward in that tier one. Just maybe keeping eyes on that six line push as we have seen it occasionally coming into effect in the exchange going down. But all in all, I've got to say lucky Karaki uh, generally do quite well on Ensk. Um, maybe not their best, but certainly a map they are proficient on. And we'll see if they can hold on. The Leprechauns have to come out with a bit of a victory now. They need to kind of pull up their socks. Jack there, as you can see, just keeping tabs on with that 5100. Quite far up towards the northeast side. Uh, Sensei seems to be joining over towards him, maybe, or just kind of getting themselves together. Yeah, I think Sensei is actually going to head over towards Jack. Um, it's been kind of strange. I'm not sure exactly if the double 5100 up north works. Um, it's quite hard to coordinate them properly. Um, but if you do get it into the right position, you can do a lot of damage. But Lucky Cracky haven't put any tanks towards there. So whatever they want to do is not going to be particularly fruitful. There's nothing there for them to kill apart from the tier ones. All they can do is get spotted and possibly have some replies of damage from Lucky Cracky. Um, and maybe the cap will actually start into, um, come into the equation. Because, you know, from we've seen it from, from uh, for instance, now from the south, from the north going towards the south, that once you kind of get past this point here, it's actually pretty good to cap. Um, you've got the cover from the buildings, and as long as you keep, you know, as many tanks away from this location where the, the tanks over here have a lot more cover, you can actually do pretty well to stop the cap. And you can see Lucky Cracky already thinking that as they are starting to destroy the buildings around it. Not keeping it in under consideration, and there has been zero movement from Lucky Karaki still hammering around his shock is pretty much the only one making any sort of moves um, mostly just back and forward uh, so yeah pretty, pretty passive stuff from Lucky Karaki probably expecting the, the push to come out of the Leprechauns um, but all in all this is what frustrates me about Lucky Karaki is when they slow down to this sort of speed and they play this very you know waiting on the opponents to make the move I feel that when they do make the moves they do a little better I look back at the maps they've won so far at least to my eyes whether it be with a cap or you know trying to stop the cap, etc. At least they go for it. But right now they just seem very happy camping away. Yeah, staying quite passive. Um, I'm wondering if they know that um, Dream Leprechauns are actually heading down. Um, you can see CNNK is going forwards. I think he wants to be nearer the cap because if he isn't, they could possibly be caught out as message. Starts to surge forward as Jack there as well. Counts already the... Uh, like uh, the guy who's who's really got the information there for Drew Leprechauns, letting them know that Lucky Cracky isn't around the cap message. We'll be able to go hold down. We've seen a lot of teams do this. He'll stop here and he'll try and get the shots at Kurax there to try and avoid that situation. But Jack in the perfect position to kill him. Um, I'm not sure of exactly how he's going to do that. He's got a lot of cover. But even if he does, he'll kind of give the game away. So it's kind of up to Kurax to do that job. Yeah, and I like that positioning. It has caused a bit of a move coming out from Lucky Karaki as well. They're having to adjust to maybe brace for impact over by the south flag there, uh, or at least their base, in case the Leprechauns do move in on it. And that's exactly what they're doing. Bishu, Money and Co. all falling back now. And you can see the count has moved forward to try and get Karak down, but make it a bit of a meal of it, really. <laughs> Unbelievably bad. Um, uh, come on, man. You can hit those shots. It's pretty easy. Correct. Gets away with that one. with only a little bit of damage to his tracks. And yeah, he got tracked and 50 H, 20 HP off him. But who cares? That should have been an easy kill there for Count. He should have gone into a situation where he got the kill 100%. He's had to have Jack come in and help him out, which is not good because it gets through, uh, Dream Leprechauns their game away, basically. And Lucky Correct can go forwards and try something here now. Although... A little bit unlikely, <laughs> it's still the possibility. It's the Leprechauns, they don't like moving that much. Uh, sorry, Karaki, they don't like moving that much. But, you know, it's it's basically made them brace for what could be of what could have been a cap then. Shock, getting waiting for that six line push, joined by Matt there, so both IS3 is present. Matt getting a little bit, uh, needs to be a little careful here. There, there are tanks around, he's trying to maybe bait out a couple of shots. Shock will land one, so Message takes a bit of a hit, but all in all, the big counter players, Kelly and Bishu moving up on the west side. Yeah, they're going to try and come behind. They're going to find Kirex and Muppety. But to be honest, I like the double 5100 uh, push around from Lucky Cracky. 
Um, I would not like to be uh, Muppety and Corrix because of damage they can do. You know, 1.8k from the SA-47 is plenty, but message there in the background as well. So three versus two, maybe not a great situation for Lucky Cracky. Also, the fact that um, uh, the tier one that is spotted CNNK kind of says, okay, you know, if they put a tier one there, they've probably also got uh, something like Kelly in the 5100 who's going to come around and take down Tello. Yeah, Kelly. Not going to miss that one. Takes down to Hello, and they're now even on tier ones. But their game plan also kind of been giving away then. So Kelly and then CNNK. No, CNNK carrying on and Kelly backing away a little there. So all in all, what are the options left for these guys? I'm not sure. Um, two minute 58. Yeah. I think what Drew and Leprechauns should do, like they, they missed on Cliff, is they saw Kelly up north. That means they have all tanks in a good position to basically push south so they should just push south and go in towards the cap kelly was out of position go for it that's what drew and leprechauns have been missing they've had opportunities they've just not seen them um clearly not a very experienced team um always when you have the firepower advantage go for it you you're always going to be mathematically superior it's really a game where if you lose a tank it, it's very hard to win it, it's extremely hard to win you're all automatically down um and uh, as you progress through the shots, you get sort of, you get worse and worse and worse until you really have no answer. The HP drastically slants off towards the other team's favour. So a lot of benefits to having a tank dead and really out of position as well. It's basically the same thing. Um, but Drew Neprecorns are starting to load towards their cap. Yes, Kyrex is going up towards Muppety as well. Um, but I think we might see something from these two. But it's incredible how slow these two teams are playing at the moment, especially Lucky Cracky. They they pretty much found the original placements almost. They're like we're, we're gonna we're gonna cross over the F line, but then be scared and run away and leave the tier one just to do it. Yay! Um, uh, it's frustrating to see this one to one. Now we're gonna have to go into the fun map basically to to decide um, who's gonna win it. And I don't know, shock there in the IS three. Just moving around, but you know they, they can't make a victory out of it now. Surely not. No, but we do get spots coming on to uh, McMoney there in the um, IS3. He's starting to kind of um, head around a little bit. Not sure exactly what his plan is right now, but um, Shock also going forwards. And yeah, we do see a little bit of a push coming from Lucky Cracky. Both Shock, Matt Peel going aggressive. Yeah, and the two-man 5100 team splitting off as well there. You can see Kelly and Bishu are heading up towards the North Mupti. Now being spotted out. The fire being exchanged, but 52 seconds is not a great deal of time. But it looks like they're trying to push in uh, <laughs> on the left side as Mopsy takes a lot of damage. Bishu will claim it. 41 seconds left, but you know the Leprechauns can play this one out as however they want. They just need to keep the tank alive. As Lucky Cracky are moving their tanks up from the south towards the north, using the railroad lines as best they can, and you can see the likes of the Leprechauns trying to get in towards the northeast corner and hunker down. Jack trying to get a couple of shots. Bishu's gone a little bit low there. 7, 3, 8, 9, 8, 8. I do correct myself. Kelly also receiving one. So back and forth. Kelly goes down. But 16 seconds left. Yeah, it's it's all a matter of no, uh, time now. I don't think there's enough time to really hammer this home. There's a lot of HP on these tanks. And Matt does take a couple. Uh, one from the side from Kirex. Jack laid down a couple of shots. But Bishu going very low. They're down at 24 HP. But money uh, takes down message. But there we go. Draw overall between these two teams. Another draw between these two teams. One day we'll see them actually trying to go for a victory. Yeah, I'm not sure how that's worked out for them, to be honest. Uh, they are one all apiece, so we are mm. going to be heading to the last map. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering how that's going to go. You know, I would have, if I was doing Leprechaun's gone for the win on that as quickly as possible. Um, at least in the last two minutes, you might as well go for the cap. Mm -hmm. The cap, when you have a little bit of time left, is basically the best option you can have. Win to Himmelsdorf the next map up. Um, and again, not a map that both Lucky Cracky and uh, Dream Leprechauns have been particularly good at. What I have to say as well, um, Lucky Cracky have been going aggressive against teams that are camping in the north, but also been passive at the same time. So mm. they're both now to play the, the northern position when they're being defensive and also counter it. Right, so final prediction. Because at the moment we're tied at 1-1. One to one. We're coming into a city map to end off with. Yeah. We've seen a lot of open maps. Uh, who's got the edge coming into this? I think um, it looked like Dream Leprechauns were the better city map team on ends. Yeah. They're a little bit more dynamic. Um, they had good wolf packs going on with the 5100s mm -hmm. and the IS3 combinations. They seem to understand the map a little bit more and, and kind of flow through it a little bit more. 
Yeah. Uh, but Lucky Cracky has that ability just to switch around and just turn into a monster of a team, which, uh, you know, Dream Leprechauns don't seem to have had this season. So it, I've got a funny feeling it's going to be the Polish team, Lucky Cracky. I wouldn't be surprised. They seem to close out these games quite well. We've seen them do it against, you know, uh, <clears throat> bigger opponents, let's say. Um, I think the Leprechauns have done well, but they've made very little moves. Uh, for my taste, they seem they seem to be kind of responding to Lucky Karaki, but never quite leading the way. Yeah. Um, whereas Lucky Karaki seem to be a little bit more happy to engage, or at least maybe look for a route through, or have that in-game plan, whether it be fast or slow. But it's the first matchup in a long time I haven't seen the likes of Mines to finish us off with, and I don't get why these teams have put the two city maps at the end. I, I know they're decisive generally towards mm. an outcome, but generally, surely you'd want that towards the first two or three there. But, you know, whatever floats their boat, the tank picks are coming in. Um, I don't think any of these two, you know, are like Isubu with that 5100 absolute adoration uh, to pick up four odd of them. But uh, at the moment, it looks fairly normal. Yeah, normal stuff coming out. Mm. Uh, triple IS3, double 5200, double tier one. Lucky cracky. Has a lot more, uh, f mm. you know, staying power. Those I threes a lot more uh, ability just to go forwards and also stay defensive. I would actually say the better defense with these double triple I threes. You you can just go hull down or, you know, um, mouse trick a lot. So good yeah. tank for that. And I think Drudy Leprechaun's going to go a little bit more um, offensive with the triple fifty one hundred mm. double I three double tier one. Also the hill a lot more of an option for them. Yep. So I think Lucky Crack are going to stay low and Drudy Leprechaun's going to go high. Well, you guys at home are still backing Lucky Karaki. Keep those votes coming through into the deciding map here. Himmelsdorf coming up 65% of you. That changed on the uh, in the little bit of the break we had coming through there. Started off very close. Mm. And it seems that more and more of you started to really warm up to the Lucky Karaki play style. So guys, get those votes through because we are ready for the final map now. Himmelsdorf. Welcome into the final matchup. Himmelsdorf now coming up between Lucky, Karaki, and the Leprechauns. And at the moment, we are still tied at one apiece between these two. Not exactly the best display of tanks, I've got to say it. Um, I'm hoping we see something a little bit more... Uh, a little, Just a little bit more from both teams, I think, is what I want to say. So, take me through what we're getting up to, first of all, with the Leprechauns. True Leprechauns seem to have duped uh, Lucky Cracky a little bit higher, because instead of going high like you would expect with the Triple 5100, they've gone completely low. Um, I might just be going into a t towards the classic defensive positions, Kyrex, <laughs> Sensei, towards the right. Although, usually it's only 15100. They've sent two there, Snake Eye Finn message. Um, back a little bit more towards the left and Lucky Cracky instead going high completely the opposite of what I said um, do you know double 5100 tier 1 all heading up no I don't not at all um, just checking yeah I know um, <laughs> 8 line as well with the 3 IS3s I mean sometimes you know I do question whether if whether these guys actually know well as tanks but um <laughs> You know, it's it's such a dynamic game. Things change so much. It's it's always hard to call, and it's really about the team you're playing as opposed to the the game you're playing, I guess. Well, at the moment, <clears throat> this is going to be a slow one, <laughs> considering they are near on at polar opposites of the map here. Leprechauns, looking like they enjoy not pressing W, but they are making a little bit of move up the one line at least. So maybe going to try and get some ground there, but. I, I, I don't know. I'm not sold. I think this is going to be a very slow game. Which is a bit of a shame because it's, it's substantially more fun when these two actually go for the fight. But at the moment, Bishu, CNNK just kind of you know, toying around the hill. Kelly coming off as well. And well, this might be a counterplay slowly forming from Lucky Karaki. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what their plan is. The 8 line certainly where they got most of their resources. Um you know, it's quite funny. Eight line is a good possibility if you're lucky, cracky, but as is the one, two, three line for Dream Leprechauns. Kira, it's gone quite far forwards. Tolo's gone very far forwards, and really, if they wanted to, they could push all the way and go for the cap as long as Tolo spots out the fact that Lucky Cracky is one tier one around here. Yeah. 
they're laughing pretty much. And as 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 is Lucky Cracky, if they decide to go up the eight line, there's nothing really there for Drew Leprechaun's Lucky Cracky will be able to split the map in half and uh, slowly but surely focus them down. But definitely the Dream Leprechauns are in the better position. I always say the one, two, three line is slightly easier to play than anywhere else. Spot comes out onto Kurak and uh, Tolo, I think he's going to get the kill. Oh, we'll find out very soon. Kurak <sighs> goes quite low, down to nine HP to Hello. Doesn't get the kill in the end, but Snake Guy Finn will, which may reveal some of the plan of what's about to happen as Snake Guy Finn is in the IS-3, so there might have to be a retraction of tanks, or at least a commitment of tanks over towards that southwest side, and naturally, if anything, we're seeing these guys getting set up a little bit further forward here. Kelly going back to the hill, and I, I don't quite understand what Lucky Cracky's endgame plan is here. Right now, they're just reacting to the fact that Drew and Epicorns know that Tolo was the only thing defending that 1 2 3 line. So they're pushing things back towards the cap, expecting for the Finnish team to come charging in, as we do see a lot of times. But, you know, DRL are not that stupid and they still haven't moved. They've kind of um, beckoned Lucky Cracky to get over towards that side and hope that they, once they got there, are actually going to push up a little bit. Mm. Um, but still, the, the position Lucky Cracky are in would be fairly easy to counter even if you did go for the cap when they were there so there's a lot of op option cards for for drl and um at the moment lucky cracky just playing some very defensive tanks hoping that it'll be enough for them to uh counter dream leprechauns but if i was dream leprechauns i'd wait until the later later stages of the game and then go for a push denying lucky cracky for that and uh well they are going for his map pl shot going message is there kind of in a, in a good position to counter this but he is on his own Sensei Kurex have to be careful because if they do end up supporting message, they'll be really in the open, maybe a couple of destructible objects between them and a lot of firepower. Yeah, and, and smart play from the Leprechauns actually, not just going for the flat out drum, hoping they keep this sort of play up. The smart play, but message. Oh, God, those IS3s just bouncing those shells there. Uh, he remains unscathed, whereas McMoney took 1106 in his, so. You need to be a little careful. The money is out on a limb here. He's the only one further forward. We've got Matt Piel coming to support him with Shock and Bishu, but they're going to be met by the Tier 1 there. So their plan gets scampered away with Shock evening the score up of Tier 1s, but the game plan has been noted now. How has the Leprechauns responded to this? They seem to be retreating again. Correct, Matt Mustage are expecting a push from Lucky Cracky, but not come so far. Message still keeping the uh, three line all sorted. And I think what best thing would be for a Dream Epicorns to do would be to cross in here and then some hold down positions with the IS3s so can go and just shoot Lucky Cracky as they do look towards the one, two, three line. But they haven't queued up to that. And Dream Epicorns as a team it generally stays away from the middle area, despite the fact that it is really perfect for their, their placements and their, their positioning right now. So. Uh, you know, it, it's missed opportunities. I think that's really the, the theme for Drew Leprechauns this time yeah. around. They're not thinking, really. They're kind of playing... They're playing the same tactic they thought about the first second they, they entered this game. It's not reactive. It's not it's evolving. Vision. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very static, which is, is a little frustrating to watch because, as you said, on every single map, they have had varying opportunities. I mean, it looks like Lucky Karaki are starting at looking towards what their options are here as they have. <clears throat> edge towards that A-line, McMoney leading the way in the IS-3. I don't think he's going to really be caught out at all unless he crosses over where, you know, the, the D-line meets um, up on this road. So if they're a bit careful around this, which I'm sure they will be, they can get some good ground covered. Yeah, they can. They can get quite far forwards. And yeah. really, it's a point of no to return now for Lucky Cracky. They committed everything they have. I mean, that's only the Tier 1 down for them. So six tanks, five of them combat tanks going forwards. But... Uh, DRL are pretty close to their cap. You can see in general they are sitting all around there. Um, and uh, they will be pretty quick go. back in towards. And also the, the spot comes out from message in towards the side. Receiving a little damage his way. 371, but also responding with a little bit of his own onto shock. 361. So a back and forwards and lucky cracky have been spotted out. Yeah, the game plan has now been given away a little bit. Money is moving up. He does have shock behind him, Matt PL and CNNK over towards the northeast. So there's a, there's a little bit of cover, there's a little bit of a plan unfolding, but three minutes and 18 seconds. They're going to have to be quick with this one if they want to pull it off. They've got to get their execution absolutely flawlessly. And they've actually left two of their tanks quite far back towards the south. Uh, Bishu and Kelly, not here at all. What's the plan with those two? Um, they're expecting Drew Leprechauns um, to actually go for the cap. It's kind of, it's you know, it annoys me a little bit because they are obviously thinking about everything, but at the same time, they're not actually committing to anything. They, yeah. they, they, yeah, yeah. they get spotted and they think, okay, the other team's going to go for the cap because we mean spotted in this location. 
but it's it it's not good enough. You you have to have you have to have a tank that's really not there for anything else apart from spotting. CNNK should be back at the cap instead of the two combat tanks you need to go forwards. And then when you have those five tanks, you can actually commit to a push and do something that really that is worthwhile instead of just constantly reacting to everything and not really having any real mainstay firepower um, for any kind of push of your own. So uh, it's again, really like a question of, of Lucky Cracky's ability to have um, the thinking ability to have uh, um, to go along with the courage they need to go forwards and really try a move that wins in the games. Yeah, it looks like Bishu and uh, Kelly are finally going to catch up to them, maybe down that one to two line to make sure that that push wasn't coming in from the Leprechauns. Um, but it, it, it's taken a long time. We're down to one minute and 55 seconds here. That's that's a lot of time lost, a lot of time wasted. And you know, there's, there's easier ways to get the information they're now gathering, let's be quite honest here. And it looks like a 3-2 split to try and pincer down towards that northwest corner, which, to be fair, there are still a few players for the Leprechauns waiting inside of uh, Bishu coming around there in that 5100, as we can see, joining up with Shock, Matt P. Element, Money. Is there enough time for them to actually get any sort of cab going here? Yeah, it might just be enough time. One minute and 25 just. seconds left. Both tier ones now going for Drew Leprechauns, but at this point in the game, they're pretty useless. It's going to have to be very quick, very aggressive, very forwarded from Lucky Cracky for them to be able to do this with one minute left. Well, let's see if they can put it off. B shoot. Where are these three IS3s going? Are they splitting mid? That might be a better idea. I think I think so. So one minute left, though. This has to be pretty damn swift to take down five battle tanks. They're going to have to make this one really damn well count. We're going to have to see if they can pull it off. And they've kept CNNK on the hill because they basically want to draw it out. But what he needs to be is actually in the cap going for the win. Wow, four or four coming off both tanks. What's the chance of that? Well, here we go. Shock takes a bit of a beating coming in. Jack still alive. Kirex does go down to Bishu. And now Shock moving in with that IS-3. Challenging down Snake Eye Finn, but he's going to find Jack. And maybe that tier one being left in this position was uh, a fairly okay idea, but they could have gone for a little more. Bishu does take one on the way out, but Money cleans up message. And now they have to take down Sensai and Snake Eye Finn. They know where both players are, but they must get these shots through. And 21 seconds, is it enough time? I don't think it's enough time to even take down Snake Eye Finn because he's in that location. 15 seconds left. Kelly, Bishu all trying to get down Sensai, but such little time, so much to do. Yeah, not got the damage, surely. Snake Eye Finn is low, 374. So moving around for the Sensai now on the run. Good work from Matt, but Bishu will have to land a, a phenomenal amount of damage in little to no time. And and ladies and gents, the final result is going to be a draw between these two. A truly lackluster performance from start to finish then. Mm. Why the hell did they not actually go for the victory at the very end? Yeah, usually teams go for the draws on the first few maps yep. so they can go for the victory in the last one. And but it makes sense. These guys genuinely didn't go for the victory on every single map. They didn't have any um, real tactics, didn't have any real exciting moves, um, nothing ingenious, didn't try anything. So from start to finish, those five games were about draws. You know, Lucky Cracky won on steps because they picked the better tanks and, uh, you know, a little bit unlucky from mm. Sensai who tried to get off the hill. And and then yeah. um, it was more about what, what um, um, Drew Leprechauns did on the next map, which really made them very good. Prokhorovka, I think, was the most... Um, impressive map for me all around. It had a genuine tactic in the middle yep. um, and stopping the cap. Everything out of the map was really non-consequence. And it's a shame because they're both very good teams, both picking up surprising results against substantially better teams than their own and causing upsets there, but not to be done today. Uh, a draw between the two, not what I wanted, but nevertheless, it's the result we're going to see. And the important factor is we're now getting very close to the two final games of the day that are going to be incredible. But you guys at home, you got your votes through. We heard it a couple of times. Melly was giving us updates. Did they get it right in the end or did they put all their faith in the lucky cracky side? They pretty much did. They mm. voted 63% for Lucky oh. Karaki. And if you have a look... They let you down. Pretty much, yes. If you look in the comment section of that poll, you see that... Um, well, from the community side of view, it should have ended very spectacular, like a clear win for one of the teams. I saw some people cheering, of course, for drooling leprechauns and, of course, for Lucky Karaki, but uh, both parties of the community, let's um, say it like that, uh, voted for something very clear, like a 2 nil or 3 nil. So they actually wanted to see some actions and the teams let them down, which is really sad. <laughs> yeah, and... Uh, I think the best thing, though, 
is the next games we have coming up. These mm. teams are not passive like that. They do not play that sort of game. Yeah. They play a phenomenal game of tanks, and that's what I think we need to now focus on. The next two games coming up, I can promise you that Scorebus against Kazakh Crew will be nothing like what we've just witnessed. Scorebus have a point to prove. They've not been performing to the par that they used to be known for under the team Dignitas or Synergy, whomever it may be, and then following that Virtus Pro up against Denial. Phenomenal stuff. And Melly, how can people get involved at home if they do want to get their votes coming through for the next games or their predictions, maybe? Or questions, maybe, which Very we true. also have. Well, just head over to facebook.com slash WGLEU and twitter.com slash WGLEU and youtube.com slash WGLEU as well. WGLEU. It's kind of a tongue, tongue break if you say it like fast <laughs> enough and often enough. And uh, of course, follow our Twitch channel to get a notification as soon as we're going live by having a little tiny pop up on the Twitch TV main page. And of course, getting an email uh, reminding you that we're going live and that, that we're actually live so you won't miss any single minute of our awesome show. And by following our platforms, you get updates during the season, you get news from the teams, you get even reminders for the VODs. We have VODs on our YouTube channel as well, so mm -hmm. yeah. which you can also check out. And the recap videos, are there available? Uh, recap videos? Like the match day recaps? No, 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 no. We might be able to put that. But we might be able to put that uh, up um, if on YouTube. If people want to see it. Exactly. Just throw me a message via facebook.com slash WGLEU, request them, and as you know, you get everything what you want, so just ask. <laughs> Oh my God! I don't know what my what what I got myself into, but uh, <laughs> I'm waiting. Uh, I'm waiting for a lot of messages from you guys. So, as said, uh, get in touch with us via those platforms, and of course, follow Lauren at They Call Me Pansy, follow Ollie at Laughter WOT, and maybe myself at at Melly on Twitter. Maybe with a maybe three. With three. With, with a three, three. Of course. <laughs> Got to remember the three. <laughs> and uh, as said, you also have the um, well. We offer you to ask our experts questions. And Pema, for, uh, for example, asked why, uh, if everything is happening in the last two minutes, why don't we reduce the, uh, the, the map time <laughs> to five minutes, for example, to, to spare us from five minutes of camping? It's a good question. Um, yeah, well, it, the it's Russian region's question. doing it. It's taking down to seven minutes, yeah. the time limit for the maps in, ge uh, in general. Uh, but it's basically being um, tested out in the Russian region, Russian CIS, and so then yep. it could be adopted by us, probably will be adopted by us in the next season. I think, for starters, it has to be introduced at the start of the season rather than Yeah, you than can't just through. change it midway through. Um, it needs to be tested out you know, throughout various regions, make sure it actually works yep. within our rule set that everything's still applicable and able to work. So once that gets tested and you know, it may seem a better option, we see more action, then I don't see it being an issue, but it has to be thoroughly checked. Of course, yes. And another question is, what is the delay? Because it could be possible to set up an extra uh, screen to watch the stream. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's, it's, that's it's, a question. It's eight minute um, delay, so you can't do that. Okay, perfect. And another question is, will we see some changes to the map pool in the near future? Hmm. Um, well, as everyone's seen, well, World of Tanks uh, Wargaming, um, the creator of World of Tanks is actually going to be creating esports maps. So. Um, they basically want to make maps just for esports, so very balanced, a little bit more easier to play in terms of um, being fast and exciting. You know, to go alongside the seven-minute rule, we might be including, and of course, the the uh, spectator client and a few other changes that are unannounced by Wargaming in general. Um, I think for season five, it's going to be a, a completely different game. Tank balancing is also coming. I think we'll have a minimum 9.2, possibly even 9.3 before season five starts. So I think for that season, it's, it's where I really want to be at at the moment. But it's somewhere on the horizon. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's really it's close, though. It's, you know, we have season four finals soon. 9.2 is already second test on the test server. So it will be probably released next Wednesday for Europe, Tuesday for Russia and Thursday for North America, I guess. Um, and then, you know, it's another month, month and a half before we have the next patch after that. But that sounds awesome. And somebody uh, on Twitter asked, actually, how, where do I get more information regarding the match days and the teams and everything? It's easy. Just head over to eu.wgleague.net. And, well, if we have a quick look on my screen, you can see, well, that this page is actually providing you with every single piece of information you need. And I would say you just surf 
over by yourself, you, you open your browser, you type in the URL and check yourself. That's the easiest way to find out. So that's pretty much it. She nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> Alrighty. So guys, get over to the website. Make sure you check that one out. Have a little look through there. You do look at the Hall of Fame as well. See where your favorite players are sitting at the moment because there's a lot of surprising players up in that top 10 as well. But speaking of top players and top teams, we have a hell of a lot of them coming up just around the corner. So guys, do stay tuned. We'll be back in about five minutes with the next incredible game. School bus up against Kazna Crew. It's a top four battle. It's going to be incredible. So don't go too far away. We'll be back in five. <laughs> 